Hello everyone, my name's Hemingway Jones. Welcome to the channel. I'm glad you found your way here to the internet's best kept secret pen show. And this is a place where we talk about fountain pens, inks, journals and journaling, and just about everything and anything that's going to keep you inspired. Now today, we're going to take a look at a very special pen. And this pen actually raises some philosophical questions. Now, how often does that happen? Well, maybe on this channel more often than not. But today, I think you're going to find this topic really interesting. So stay tuned while we talk about the Ferris Wheel Press Brush Pen. Before we begin, I'd like to do a quick pen check. So I've been using the Ferris Wheel Press brush pen quite a bit, but I've also been using this amazing Pilot E95S. And I have to tell you, I ordered this in late March and it arrived in mid June. So I wanted the custom color and believe it or not, I wanted it in a fine point. So this is an amazing pen. It is incredibly small until you post it and then it becomes a normal size pen. It's very elegant and dare I say it has a certain feminine energy to it. It feels sort of like a cosmetic product the way that it caps and closes and it's very very sophisticated very sleek and it has a gorgeous integrated design i've been loving using this and i'm sure you're going to hear more about it very soon so as many of you probably know i have a tiktok channel and it's fairly popular and we talk about fountain pens over there and i do get some sponsors that are very generous and they share pens with me and I'm only able to do short videos by the nature of TikTok. So I take those same pens and I do longer videos on them here, which is really great for me to kind of get into some of the details and all the various things that I'd love to talk more about over there. So I think that my TikTok and my YouTube complement each other very, very well. Now, one of the interesting things is that my sponsors give them to me for TikTok content, not for YouTube. Most of them don't even know I have a YouTube, so there's no correlation there. So this is just a free sharing of my experiences with these pens, and I'm going to tell you the good and the bad and the extraordinary. So let's talk about the Ferris Wheel Press brush pen. Ferris Wheel Press is one of those brands where I was really intrigued because their marketing is genius. Each of their bottles just looks like they were designed by Guillermo del Toro or came out of one of his films. They just look like little magic potion bottles. And then their pen looked very intriguing and I've seen people using them online and I had never tried one, I'd never seen one in person. So it was very exciting to get my hands on one. So I filled up this pen with their Ruby Royal Flush ink because I like to use the brand's inks in their pens just to see if it enhances it in any way. And Ferris Wheel Press inks are very interesting, very magical. This particular one has incredible sheen and it has a bit of shimmer as well. So it's a really intriguing combination. And it's also that rare red color that looks really good on the page and doesn't look like something like a teacher would use to correct a paper. It is a very usable, writable ink for journals and for correspondence. So Ferris Wheel Press pens are very beautiful when they're closed. 
They have this sort of general shape with the tapering body of the kind of pens that used to be desk pens back in the 40s and the 50s. And then it has a beautiful elongated cap that's secured by a bolt that I'm tempted to go grab my Craftsman wrenches and to see what size it is. I mean, it's a true brass bolt. The pens themselves have a copper base, they have brass details, they have steel nibs, but each component is very high quality in its choice of materials. And if you look at it under a loop as I did, you'll see that the fit and the finishing is very, very nice. The etching on the grip section is a spectacular. The nib itself is decorated and is really, really beautiful. The Ferris wheel press brush pen comes with a very high quality converter already installed. No cartridge is included, so it's easy to fill directly from a bottle. Ferris wheel press makes a wide selection of magical sheening and shimmering inks that you can choose from. And of course you can use your other favorites as well. Okay, so where does the philosophical question come in? Here it is. This pen can be posted, but it should not be posted. And that is to say that it has this gorgeous satin finish. And the pen itself is designed with the inspiration of a paintbrush. So you're supposed to hold just the body of the pen in your hand, and it's quite an elegant and ex really nice, precise writing experience. However, many of us love to post pens and the cap will slide on the back fine. But if you do it, you stand a very good chance of having that brass nut put a nice scratch into the body of the pen. So you have to ask yourself, is it worth it? So with this pen, you basically have three choices, right? You can avoid it altogether because you really shouldn't post it. You can post it and scratch it and just figure it's part of the experience. And I'll get back to that in a minute. Or you can use it the way that they recommend, unposted. Now, you've heard me talk about this in the past where I wouldn't touch a pen that I could not post. I enjoy posting pens. I even post pens that really shouldn't be posted. And I'm thinking about a pen like the Twisby Diamond 580. When you put that cap on the back of that big pen, it really does throw off the weight. I'm a fairly strong guy with big enough hands, but even for me, I find that it's a bit top heavy in that, at that point, and it's probably better not to post it, yet I do. The pen that sort of taught me that, okay, maybe we shouldn't post each and every pen was the Mont Blanc Egyptomania, which simply cannot be posted. And with that, you sort of very reverentially take off the cap, place it in front of you, and enjoy writing with that amazing and interesting pen. I won't say anymore. You guys have heard me talk about that pen enough. However, this pen, you have those choices. Now, if you avoid it entirely, you are missing out on a great writing experience. So this pen is very elegant. It's a bit slight in your hand, but the grip has this incredible etchings that's inspired by their printing presses. And it sort of gives off this Victorian technology, perhaps I hate to say it, but steampunk vibe, if you will. But it feels really good in your hand because all of this etched metal just gives you that much more grip and that much more control. The nibs only come in two sizes, and you can certainly pass opinions about that, medium or fine. It's a shame there's not a broad or a stub. I mean, I think these pens are begging for a stub. Now, I suppose you could send it off to a nib smith and do whatever you want with it. However, as it is, medium or fine are really your choices. So the pen really does write with precision. And it's a joy to use, especially in a small journal as I am using right now. I'm using a Bottega Obscura journal that's quite small. And often I take it with me various places as, as I'm sure you've seen in my B-roll. I journal everywhere. So this pen just really complements a smaller writing style to get a lot of words into a smaller space. 
The pen, of course, comes in a lot of different colors. This one has a satin finish. It's called creme glacé, which means ice cream in French, evidently. I had to look that up. Um, but it's a very beautiful sort of vanilla frosted finish, and it would be a shame to scratch it. However, I have done this with many of my pens. The Cartier Diablo isn't meant to be posted. Certainly the cap fits on there and it actually does have an internal brass structure. So it's very similar and it did scratch my pen and I knew this before I started using it. However, that particular pen feels really small in my hand and I enjoy writing with it posted. And I just figured it's part of the process. It's like the concept of wabi-sabi, right? And I look at it now that when something gets dented, scratched, that's when it becomes mine. When it's perfect, it belongs on the shelf. That's when you acquire something. As it travels with you through life and you have adventures, you drop it on a cafe table in Rome. You accidentally drop it on the beach in Cornwall. It gets chipped, it gets scratched, it evolves as you do. We are all wrinkling and graying and falling apart and so are our things. And they are traveling along this road with us through life. So it's best to enjoy them however it is that you enjoy them. So for me, if I decide to post a pen, I'm going to accept the damage that comes with it if I need that for the experience of using the pen. And in the case of my Cartier, I certainly chose to do that. That pen is coming with me through the rest of my life and then it will be passed on to my daughter one day. Now with this particular pen, I made a different choice. I quite love the satin finish. I did not want to see it with the scratch, although I'll tell you when I unpacked it, I was so tempted to just slide that cap on there. So I do the same thing I do with the Egyptomania. I rest it in front of me when I use it, or if I'm standing up and I'm outside somewhere, it goes in my pocket. The nice nut on the cap is also very useful for the fact that the cap won't go rolling away on you. And then I use the pen body much as a paintbrush. And I write and paint my letters and numbers with precision. And I've been enjoying this very, very much. And along that same theme of Wabi Sabi, this pen has a brass grip, which is much like the ferrule of a paintbrush, where the bristles would go is your nib, right? So the grip is like the ferrule of a paintbrush. Now being made of brass, that will tarnish and age over time and develop a true patina on the metal that will make it look even more interesting as time goes on. So I'm certainly going to enjoy it in that way, but if you made a different choice and you decide to post it, I think that's completely valid. I've been there myself, but I would be remiss if I didn't warn you in advance that that could happen. So what are the pluses and minuses, if you will, of this pen? For one thing, there's nothing else like it out there. It has a unique and beautiful design. The engraving on the grip is amazing. It's made out of brass, which is a high quality material. And the body of the pen has a copper base with this enamel satin coating. It's just gorgeous. The brass nut is very nice as well. The nut is very similar to the top of their Magic Potion ink bottles, if you've seen those. So, the experience is unique. The aesthetics of the pen are magical, just like everything else that Ferris Wheel Press offers. They give you a little pen sleeve to protect it, which I've been using, which is very nice. It's a nice addition as well. So there is a lot to be said for this pen. Now, what are the negatives? The negatives would be that you're not really supposed to post it, and I think you should consider that as we've discussed in this video. The other negative is that there's only two nib sizes, which I'm a bit surprised about. It would be very nice to see a stub nib or a broad. Beside that, it is really an exceptional pen that I've been enjoying using. I've been using it every day by choice, probably for the last 
three weeks and it's been a fantastic writing experience and I'm just happy to have the opportunity to share it with you. So what do you think about the Ferris Wheel Press brush pen? Is this one you'd love to add to your collection? Do you have it already? What are your thoughts on it? Is the fact that you can't post it just a no-go for you? Or is that no big deal? Let me know in the comments. Well, thank you very much for watching this video and thanks for being part of our small little group here on the internet. It's a lot of fun discussing fountain pens with all of you in the comments in between videos. So thank you for that. If you would do me one last favor, please like, comment, subscribe, and perhaps share this video with someone else who you think would appreciate this content. It'd be great to meet more people and to expand our circle. So I release new videos every Thursday. Expect one next week unless it's a holiday and I will see you then so please take care of yourself and I will see you further up the road.